So today I'm filming my education story. I have, haven't really seen anyone on YouTube do an education story yet and I thought it would be quite fitting considering it's the time of year where everyone's off to university or college and basically it's a time for big decisions in your life whether you want to make them or not. So I thought I would film a video because I am the kind of person who has been through the works, I've done college, sick form, everything. So I thought I would probably be the right person to talk to you in a video about this kind of thing because I didn't strictly follow the path and I didn't strictly go straight to uni or anything like that and because of that I am actually, I did actually start uni at 21 instead of 18 which is kind of an age difference so I'll talk to about that later in the video. I'm also going to be filming a video about how I got into fashion, how I ended up in fashion school kind of thing. I wanted to make this one specifically for like education as a whole but then I also wanted to make one to do with fashion. This is obviously the education version and I'm waffling again. Let's start at the beginning. Primary school, I went to two different primary schools. I went to one primary school until year two and then I moved to another primary school because it's the one that my mum and dad preferred and it was a bit further away from home but it was Catholic and whatnot so they really wanted me to go there so I did. I still didn't really know at like 10 years old what I wanted to do when I was older. I know briefly I wanted to be a vet and a primary school teacher but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I started secondary school in a school with two of my friends and we were the only three girls from my primary school. Um, but in year nine after some issues mum and dad wise I ended up living with my dad and he had to move to Belgium with his job so I got the choice to go with him or stay put and because I was having troubles with the school at the time and I wasn't being treated the nicest way um, I decided to go with my dad and I really wanted the experience of moving abroad and learning a new language and everything like that so we moved to Belgium in I think about March so I kind of left in the middle of the year I only found out two weeks before we went so that was quite an upheaval and then I moved to Belgium and I went to a French speaking school with my two stepsisters who were younger than me at the time and they're about seven years younger than me so it's kind of a big difference so at this time I was probably about 13 years old and it was quite a big change for me I had to do French lessons all morning every morning and then I'd go to school in the afternoons and I was with people who were French. It was a school where nobody really could speak English. The people in my class were learning English and it was kind of like, everyone knew a little bit but they didn't really talk to me and I was kind of the outcast, I didn't have any friends um, because obviously I was the foreign girl who no one really knew or wanted to speak to. I didn't know enough French to speak to them, they didn't know enough English to speak to me. So it was a bit of a horrible time and I did kind of spend a lot of time on my own in that time period um, which I think is why I like spending time on my own so much now because it's what I had to get used to. But in the summer of that year, so I'd only been in the school a couple of months, they would already kept me back a year, they were trying to keep me back another year so I'd have been with people two years younger than me so I came back and moved in with my mum where I went to a secondary school and started in year 10. It was a different one to the previous two but I started again and I decided that I really, 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 really wanted to do art because the whole time where I'd been in Belgium, all I used to do was sit and draw. So I decided that art was 100% a subject I wanted to do. So when I went in to choose my options, I chose art, graphics, business and French. French, obviously, because it's what I'd been doing for the past few months every single day, so I was good at it. The other two, because I was good at it in business, because my mum and dad told me that business was the right thing to do. Come year 11 and my exams, I didn't revise for any of them. I spent about the night before, maybe two nights before doing my art homework for my exam. I literally didn't really care about school. Um, the only thing I really cared about was that I wanted to do art in my future, but I didn't like the workload. So I kind of didn't pursue it, even though my three highest subjects were B's, which was art, graphics and French, and then I got a U in business, which just goes to show you should never listen to what your parents say. I went through to sick form and went to the open day with all my friends and we all decided that we wanted to go to the sick form linked with our school. Being me and not wanting to lose the only friends that I'd made in the past few years, I decided to stay put in charters where I was and to just do some A-levels there like everyone else is doing. And stupidly, I followed my best friend who wanted to be a nurse, who is now a nurse, training to be, she's in uni. Um, and I didn't really want to be separated from her, so I decided to do health and social care, sociology, 
psychology. I can't remember what else I did, but it can't have been that good if I can't remember. But I did those subjects and I stupidly chose against doing art or graphics and I failed everything. I never went into sick form. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't want to be there. I wasn't doing anything that I enjoyed or anything that I wanted to have a future in. I felt like the only thing I could really do was to do what everyone else was doing and go and study psychology in uni, but psychology was my weakest subject. And I basically was having a really tough time with it all. I failed all my exams. The highest I got was a C in health and social care. Um, and I still wasn't doing what I loved. The only reason I went to sick form was to follow my friends and because my parents told me it was the right thing to do and they pushed me into doing things like psychology because that's what they knew would get me good money in the future. Come the end of the first year of sick form, I decided not to stay there anymore and decided to go off on my own and do what I wanted to do. So over the summer, I left the sick form, I didn't go back, I didn't even blink an eyelid about it, I wasn't even bothered and I chose to go and do an apprenticeship in hairdressing. The only reason I really went to do the apprenticeship in hairdressing was because I had a YouTube channel at the time and that was what I enjoyed doing. I enjoyed doing my hair, I enjoyed doing other people's hair and just basically that's what I thought I wanted to do. So I needed some money, I couldn't really be bothered to find a proper job so I thought right, I'll hit the nail on the head and do an apprenticeship in hairdressing where I can learn, go to college as well as also getting money on the side and that's what I did. But three months later, exactly the same with the sick form, I decided to drop it. I wasn't happy, I wasn't enjoying it, and I just didn't want to do it. I enjoyed colouring hair and cutting hair, but I couldn't see myself doing it for the rest of my life, and I didn't really want to. I dropped it again. Um, I decided I wanted to do beauty at college, but what I did in the meantime was get a job at Legoland. So Legoland is quite close to me at home and I decided to get a job there for the summer just to get myself some money and to just have a laugh while I was waiting to figure out what I wanted to do the rest of my life because at this point I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, my mum and dad are getting really fed up with me because I'd been to college, I'd been to sick form and I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I kept dropping out of everything and they were getting just as frustrated with it as me because obviously I couldn't tell them what I was going to do with my future and they didn't want me having a dead end job and I just didn't have a clue. I really didn't know what to do. So went to work at Legoland and finished there in August and I had applied to do beauty at college. Being on YouTube still I decided that beauty at college would be the right thing to do because it's another thing I enjoyed and I thought if I didn't like hairdressing maybe I'd like beauty because that was the two things I really liked doing. And I went to college and dropped out at Christmas again three or four months later again. So I kind of realised that beauty wasn't what I'd expected, it wasn't all makeup artists and things like that, it was facials and pedicures and manicures and it was quite boring, I didn't really like it, so I left. And this time was kind of like the decider for me when I realised that maybe I should go back to art because that was what I enjoyed. And I decided that maybe art would be the right thing for me to do. So fashion was the kind of thing that I'd always known I wanted to do but I hadn't really gone for it. I remember when I was about 12 I used to sit in my bedroom and I used to draw fashion designs all the time. I used to always like have a wall covered in pictures that I'd drawn fashion wise. I used to always just love drawing clothes and even though I wasn't really a good hand on the sewing machine I remember being about 9 years old and I made outfits out of scrap fabric for me and my brother to wear to hold for a play for my grandparents. And it was literally just like a piece of fabric that I'd sewn up the back and sewn like two bits of ribbon to to make like a dress. But I made it and I've, not many nine year olds would make something like that. And so I went back and evaluated the situation and my friend Pip who is a blogger um, at the time was about to go and do fashion photography. So we were sat down in my house and I remember we were literally sat there with another friend and I was showing her my work and explained how I wanted to go do fashion and she was telling me how to get a portfolio together and helping me out and my mum had agreed that she would stick by me by whatever I decided to do. So I applied to do college and do fashion. I'm getting emotional, why am I getting emotional? So I decided to do fashion and it was kind of like... When I went to the interview it was kind of like I knew that that was the rest of my life and I knew that that was what I wanted to do. So I had my interview with a teacher who was called Sam and she basically 
looked at my work and said it was really good, she was really impressed and she'd love to have me on the course, which most tutors probably tell everyone, but I was really pleased to hear it and I ran home to my mum and told my mum instantly how happy I was and I got on with my summer project. I spent all my time doing my work and researching. I started my fashion blog, which I'd never started before. Admittedly, I didn't really give it much effort for about a year. I kind of put one post up every few months, so I deleted them all. I started college in September and I've never really looked back. I did college for two years. It was a BTEC in fashion and textiles. I read about how much younger everyone else was. In college I was always brought up as an issue that I was a lot older and everyone used to always sort of like say, oh Jess, like you're already 20. Oh. And the one big thing for me is like knowing that I'm older than everyone else. Like I hate to think that I'm older than everyone else. So it was a massive, massive thing for me. When I was going to the interviews, I sort of questioned the tutors saying like, oh, what sort of ages are people? And they were all saying to me like, I don't know why you're worried. Everyone's the same age, everyone's older. Honestly, you're not gonna be the oldest. You're probably gonna be the youngest. So I went along to my interviews and I chose to go to Southampton Uni and to do fashion design which I later changed to go to UCA in Epsom, which is where I am now. And the only reason I chose Southampton was because at the time, most of my class had got into Epsom and my teacher basically told me that Epsom were just accepting everyone, it wasn't a very good uni to be going to and that I should probably have kept my options open. I know fully well that I didn't try when it came to getting into uni because I panicked when it came to my portfolio, I had a lot of stuff going on at home and I didn't really... I knew it was what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, but everything else was taking over, like my life was taking over my course, so I sort of half-hearted it and then ended up choosing Southampton because it's what she told me to do, when Epsom was the one that I really wanted. So I changed my thing to Epsom at the last minute. I'm just going into my second year and I honestly have never looked back. I personally think that everything I've been through with education has made me realise how much more I wanna be doing fashion and it's made me realise that I should follow my own dreams and not anyone else's. Still to this day, my dad doesn't believe that fashion is a real degree. He still thinks that it's never gonna get me anywhere. But I know that there's like 700 courses in England for fashion. I know that there's like ridiculous amounts of jobs in fashion, even if they're really hard to come by because so many people study it. And I know that fashion is where my heart is and where I wanna be, so, I'm willing to work hard to get there and I just basically know that doing fashion is completely the right thing for me and if I'd have done anything else then I just wouldn't have worked hard so that's what I'm doing and I'm really glad to be doing it. I kind of just wanted to make this video to say that it's okay if you don't know what you want to do, it's okay if you mess up at college and you decide to change course. It's okay if you don't want to go to college and you want to get a full-time job. It's okay if you change your university and your degree and you don't know what you want to do and you, it's okay, you don't have to know. I think it's just where I should have been the whole time and I'm so glad that I finally followed my own dreams and gone after it and stop listening to what everyone else says and stop trying to be like everyone else and do what everyone else is doing because doing that never gets you anywhere. You need to be your own person and for some weird reason society expects us to make our decisions at 18 years old to decide what we want to do with the rest of our life. Even at 16 years old if you go to college to do a BTEC like I did and it's not really the time where you know what you want to do with the rest of your life so it's completely okay for you to not know and to maybe be a bit undecided about things and maybe try things out because you're 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. You're not old enough to know what you wanna do with the rest of your life. I still don't know exactly what I wanna do with the rest of my life. I know I wanna be in fashion, I know I wanna be in menswear, but I still don't know whether I wanna be a designer or whether I wanna be a print designer or whether I wanna work for someone or a magazine or what. I literally don't know. I just know that I wanna be in menswear and I wanna be in fashion for the rest of my life. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and comment down below if you want to with anything and I will see you in my next video. If you've got any questions or requests or anything, leave them down below and I will get around to them because I am now uploading every Wednesday and every other Sunday if I remember to do a video because when I've got deadlines and stuff, uni can be a little bit hectic. So I've tried to backdate myself a bit but I can't promise that I've backdated myself enough. So yeah, I will see you in my next video. Yeah.